What does retirement look like to you? Have you begun to put a plan in place where you can address that? Today, we're gonna to share with you some things that you, you might wanna consider as you start making those decisions about retirement. Welcome to Dollars and Cents, where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your dollars. We are Central Florida's longest running radio program coming to you on a host of radio stations throughout Central Florida. We are also one of the top 25 financial planning podcasts on the World Wide Web with over 20,000 downloads of our program and counting. Now be sure to subscribe to our channel on your favorite social media or pro, uh, podcast platform of choice. If you have any trouble finding us, just go to our website, nelsonfinancialplanning.com. Look up in the right hand corner, see a list of different social media outlets, click the one you're most familiar with. You'll be able to watch this show and previous shows that we put together talking about your financial planning needs. My name is Rob Field. I am a certified financial fiduciary, a certified mutual fund specialist, and a national social security advisor at Nelson Financial Planning, where our team of certified financial planning, uh, certified financial fiduciary stands ready this week to help you change your life with a successful and cost-effective financial plan. As you might notice, Joel Garris is off this week, and so I'm hosting. I am joined to my right by Christina Lamb, a fellow certified financial fiduciary, also an IRS enrolled agent. Welcome to the studio. Thanks, Rob. Good morning. It's great to be here. It is wonderful to be here. It's been a great week. Uh, markets are hanging a little bit on the flat side, but we're moving forward. It is summertime, got a little heat going on. Yep, definitely. So Rob and I have worked together for over seven years here at Nelson Financial Planning. And today we're gonna discuss what retirement might look like for baby boomers and Generation X, as there are some new retirement problems they may face other than our prior generations. So lucky for our listeners, Rob here is a baby boomer. For those of you uh, born between 19, 46 and 1964 and I am from Generation X for those of you born between 1965 and 1980. Christine and I were reviewing a recent study that came out kind of addressed some of the thoughts that retirees and pre-retirees uh, pre might have as they observe what they think retirement might be for them. We found these results to be interesting we thought we would share with you some of the points that we had picked up on um, as Christina mentioned, we were both from each generation, so we feel like we're well representing what this, uh, this article in the survey had to say. We found out first that when people are asked about their own personal retirement, that the studies show that only 27% see today's retirement in the same light as their parents or grandparents might have seen it, while another 55% would define it as a whole new chapter in life, something moving forward, new challenges to face, and they put a lot of emphasis on the health and finance needs of themselves. In fact, 75% of those surveyed said they plan to realize their hopes and dreams in a new, less pressured stage of their lives. Less pressure and more fun. It's a lot different from what previous generations would, des would describe as they would go off into retirement. So it's more of a positive aspect, a little more upbeat, looking forward to it. So we looked at some of the top milestones, the things that they thought would occur or they were looking forward to. The pre uh, the retirees, they kind of viewed this as, again, start a whole new chapter. So what they were doing was saying, okay, we think 34%, or what we found is that 34% thought that they would stop working full-time. It's only one third. Another 22% said receiving social security or a pension would be a big milestone. So they are thinking ahead, but they're not really thinking about leaving a job completely because 17% stated that leaving one's job or career was the milestone. That leaves almost 85% that are still thinking about working sometime during retirement. And actually only 10% said that the start of retirement to them actually meant a specific age. So when they review retirement, it's not that it needs to occur at a certain point, it's just it occurs at a certain point of their particular life and how they might be reviewing their life and retirement at that point. I think that's you know really interesting because our you know predecessors or maybe our parents they had pensions that that they counted on, um, so it was more of a fixed income that they were almost guaranteed to an extent that they were going to receive at a particular age. So I think it was a little different perspective as they retired um, versus as we do. Very or true. Will. Good point. 
we um, we found that working in retirement was going to be really part of their new longevity equation. They were basically in the survey they were saying that they don't see retirement as a, a place where they're going to stop. It's a place where they're going to grow, a place they're going to continue. They actually said in the survey that three out of five had responded that during their retirement, 22% said they will still be looking for work, 19% said they'll be looking for work and leisure, and 18% said they actually will continue to work. They are not going to retire. To them, retirement will be just to continue to do what they're doing, maybe in a lesser fashion, but still in a work mode. And so, you know, I think those are just amazing uh, statistics compared to um, how retirement used to look um, to our predecessors. And I think that shows that there are several changes that our generations are going to face compared to the previous ones. There are the normal challenges to deal with, such as medical expenses or Social Security, which we're going to touch base on a little bit more later on in the program. You also have budgeting and what to do with your time. Um, but more recently, with average lifespans increasing, there are other questions that come up, such as, you know, do I want to work part time? Is, is this not the end of a career and maybe a start of a new one? You know, something a little bit more interesting, a little less demanding, um, something that reaches out to something you're passionate about um, that maybe, you know, you you worked in a different career that sort of suited your family's needs or something you were really good at, but not necessarily something that you loved. Um, so this is what some of these retirees may move to. You know, more so, do I want to sit around for the next 30 years, possibly? So there has to be some sort of other involvement in your life to uh, kind of keep you happy and, and, and involved. And these things will help you generate what will retirement look like for you and help you be happier in the next new chapter of your life. That's a great point. It, 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 as we looked at that study, we realized over and over that retirement was not a slowdown period. It wasn't something where they kind of looked at it as a negative or the end of something. It really was open up a whole new chapter, a whole new idea, give them more options, uh, having retirement funds they can use to help them do some things that they just couldn't do while they're actually working. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So in that study, certain phrases popped up a lot. One of them was continuation of life. They don't view it as a slowdown. They view themselves as continuing, life still growing, still having fun. Uh, the survey showed a lot of statements where people were saying, I'm not going to slow down. I'm not going to get on the sideline. I'm not going to get out of the work mode. I'm not going to take an attitude that uh, I'm getting older. And they were all, they mentioned a lot about wanting to move forward, continue on with their life. Probably had a list of things that they've always wanted to do. Retirement uh, allows them with the time to address some of that, working full time. And we know some people are working, you know, five, six days a week eight, nine, ten hours a day. Retirement can open up some doors for them, allow them to do some things they just couldn't do during the work period uh, and have a little more freedom. So these descriptions, as we heard those, we, we kind of realized that uh, financial planning is going to come into place. It's a need that we're going to want to address as time goes on. That study did say that 95, or I'm sorry, 59% of those retirees, they intend to work into retirement. So retire, maybe slow down, but continue to work. The goal was kind of a transition to slowly move out of the work mode and get really more back into a combination of work and uh, related activities, even if it's only on a part-time basis. Study's been very interesting. We're gonna continue to share some other points from that study in just a few more minutes. Stick with us. You're listening to Dollars and Cents here in Central Florida. Continuation of life, not a slowdown, moving forward. These are the descriptions that popped up a lot during the survey that Christine and I are sharing with you today. The study was showing that 59% of those retirees do say they intend to work into their retirement. They have a goal to do a very slow transition, moving from the work mode into the retirement mode, uh, kind of have a lot of work related activity, maybe work on a part-time basis. They viewed moving forward as still a positive, a, 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 something that's active in their life, not a slowdown. And really, I keep using the, the kind of the phrase, a new chapter, so that, you know, their life is a book. Every chapter, something new happens. It gets more exciting as they get a job, have kids, get married, buy the house. As they move into retirement, they view it as another positive chapter, a, a moving, a, an event that's helping them to move forward, enjoy life even more. 
And so next on that list is longevity. Um, longevity is a key issue that our generation will, fit, will face thanks to um, medical advancements and technology. So one of the key components is making sure that you have enough money to last that period of your retirement, um, as well as to keep your mind busy. Um, one of the things they find is finding ways to slow down and enjoy life a little bit more um, makes it easier to get through that stage. Um, so this may mean volunteering, spending more time with your family or your grandkids, finding ways to possibly pass your life lessons that you've learned um, through age and time um, on to others. The study showed that 83% of recent retirees felt a responsibility to actually help future generations and, and pass on um, some of their life lessons. Great point. Um, my dad is retired, lives in Texas. Mm -hmm. And he struggles with a lot of these same issues. He wants to stay active, but as he gets older, that slows him down. And he's got to think of different ways to be active, different ways to be mobile. Uh, he's very concerned about watching his finances. Uh, he realizes that, yes, he's getting older. Modern medicine is keeping him as healthy as they can. He's going to live a few more years, and he's realizing that you know what he might have thought of retirement and when he might actually not need income anymore is being advanced. So he's having to think of different ways to stretch his finances, look at his income, plan ahead. Uh, and he's, he's real big on sharing his experiences, his life experiences with his kids and his grandkids. He's looking for ways to do it. And at home, less mobility. Sometimes he's just not getting out enough and, and sharing these wonderful thoughts that he wanted to share. Now here's a question. I think you can kind of see it coming from where this survey is, is could age 65 actually be too young? To retire financially. We hear that a lot. 65, let's say you live to be 95 another 30 years, that's not really slowing down. That's a whole, as they would describe it, a whole new chapter. So we have to kind of remove this belief that everyone should stop working at age 65. Happened in the past, that's definitely what my dad thought, what my grandfather would have thought. It's just kind of a standard, oh, you know, you divide life into three pieces, 30, 60, 90, so I'm in the last third, that has to be retirement, and that's just not really the way it's happening today. Uh, and definitely the survey has showed that the baby boomers, Gen X, they don't plan at 65 to just shut it down. Uh, number one reason you really can't retire at age 65 is most of us just can't afford to. If we know that we've got many years ahead of us, we wanna have fun in retirement, then we need to save maybe a little bit more or work and uh, as we're kind of in semi-retirement, Second reason that you probably don't want to retire right at age 65 is it's good for us to work. It keeps us healthy. It's one way to really stimulate the mind. A lot of people will say, oh, gosh, I am going to retire, and all I'm going to do is sit back, fish, just enjoy life. And that's really not the way the survey is showing things. People are active. They're trying to get out, see their kids, and, again, maybe even work in a little bit more. So that second reason, actually good for us to work. We don't mean you gotta do hard work. You can slow it down, you can have a job that's less strenuous, doesn't have to be a physical labor job, but just something where you feel like you're giving back. Because giving back was real big in the survey, even giving back uh, through at the company level or giving back uh, to society, giving back to their kids. And then the third reason, uh, a lot of people just don't wanna retire at 65, it's not necessarily financial, but it's social. It's one way for people to keep up with their friends, uh, people they work with. We find that you know, a, lot of, a lot of your activity is involved around work, during work time, or even just simply the people you spend time with after work. So that's the survey. We thought it was interesting. Uh, I think it, it kind of pointed out, I guess, livelihood, the, the young feeling that people are having in today mm -hmm. and how they're really not viewing themselves as retirement being a necessity and, and retirement being something in which they just shut it down completely. Or that you're old and that life's old. over. Right. <laughs> like you're retired, there's nothing else left to do. <laughs> That's a great point. I mean, the definition of old is- It's definitely uh, changed. It's definitely changed. And as I get older, and again, I'm on the baby boomer side and retirement could happen soon. I don't see myself doing it anytime soon, but it certainly hits close to home that I'm like, gosh, I'm at that magical age where many people generations before retiring, I have no 
I have no intention to do that. It's just yeah. not going to happen. I think what I see too is it, it just sort of depends on how you keep yourself. There's, you know, 65 is different for a, a lot of different people. Some people have aged a little bit more than others and some people tend to be more spry, you know, potentially those who ended up being more active and and whatnot. So they're, you know, still ready to give it a few. Yeah. <laughs> trying to throw myself in that same category. I think you I are. Can. I it's think so you are. So absolutely. Absolutely. So up next, we have uh, the six things to know before you jump into retirement. Um, so these are things to consider, um, you know, start thinking about before you make that final step into retirement. Um, the first of those is identity. So for 30 to 40 years, um, you had this particular identity um, conferred by the organization that you worked for. Um, it was denoted in your email signature, your business cards, possibly your title. Um, and this identity may have came with certain privileges and power. Um, but in retirement, that sort of changes. There's almost a clean slate and you, you have the option to have a whole new identity to be formed. And um, it can be really humbling for a lot of people, especially those who maybe had positions of power or just felt a great responsibility um, to their job. So as you, you think of this, you know, you want to take some time and, and figure out what may make you happier in retirement. And that may be, as Rob has pointed out, you know, not completely stop working or maybe finding, you know, something that you would like to work into um, that, you know, made you a little bit happier in life or something you were passionate about that you didn't really get to do in your job. And understand that just because um, you don't have a fancy title anymore doesn't mean that uh, you're not important. Excellent points, very well stated. We were talking, Christine and I, about you know, preparing for retirement. Eventually it does come. We did share the survey where people might be putting it off, <clears throat> excuse me, or uh, trying to do it in a different light. But at some point, you want to consider some things if you're going to move on to that retirement phase, either full-time or part-time. Uh, identity is very important. And then kind of keeping track of who you are. It leads you into another point that we thought was interesting was your purpose. And, you know, what is your purpose in life? What do you want your purpose in life to be? Uh, the effort to make money, which is sometimes just becomes a natural purpose while you're working, it's going to be replaced by something, something that has a little more meaning to you. Uh, you know, it won't be about making the money. It's going to be about finding that new meaning, maybe a new motivation. What is it that's uh, going to help you get up in the morning? What is it that you want to do? What's important? What will make you feel good at the end of the day that you reached out, touched somebody, did somebody, influenced something that wasn't work related? Uh, you know, what's going to get you excited? What's, how are you going to give back? How are you going to be involved in things that you consider to be positive? Uh, could be a new hobby. Uh, you might have always wanted to take up a hobby and now you have the time and, and maybe the resources financially to pick that up. A lot of times it's helping kids or grandkids. If, you have, if you're working at your job, sometimes you can't travel as much as you would like. You can't get around and see your kids or your kids' kids or your, your grandkids. I know my dad was the same way when he worked that uh, if, you know, if I was in Florida and he was located in Texas, it's just not feasible for him to spend as much time with me or my kids, especially when they're small as he wanted to. And then again, then my kids are in school, hard for them to get out and visit him. So freedom of time, you know, once you kind of see your, your purpose, you can then start thinking of ways to uh, do things that make you happy and also make, uh, you know, hopefully make some other people in your, fa in your, your family happy, happy also. I know that when I get close to retirement, I don't want to feel obligated to have to go to work. I'd like to have the option to work when I want. Personally, I don't see retirement anytime soon, but when it does come, I certainly want to make sure I have a strong purpose in life. You're listening to Dollars and Cents. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Dollars and Cents, where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your dollars. We are Central Florida's longest running radio program, coming to you on a host of radio stations throughout Central Florida, also a top 25 financial planning podcast. Anytime you want to see this show or previous versions of this show, go to your favorite social media site. Feel free to go to our website, nelsonfinancialplanning.com. A lot of links up in the right-hand corner can take you to where you'd like to go. Again, I'm Rob Field with Nelson Financial Planning, joined by Christina, Christina Lamb, also with Nelson Financial Planning. Joel Garris is off this week. We'll return next week. We have been talking about six things we think are important that you should consider as you move towards retirement or semi-retirement, as we have 
have talked, and that's before retirement. Uh, I don't plan on it myself. We had gone through a list. I had talked a little bit about personally myself. I don't see myself fully retired. I enjoy working, but don't want to be obligated to have to show up Monday through Friday for multiple hours. So I'll tone it back when the time comes. Again, not anytime soon. <laughs> I think that's interesting because my perspective right now is that I see myself retiring at 65, <laughs> but I still have quite a, a 20 year spectrum at least to, uh, to get to that point. Um, but I think many things may change in that time period, especially for Generation Xers like myself. You know, I still have my family life at home, kids are still at the house, you know, once we become empty nesters, that, that may change my perspective on things. And I think that's what happens uh, for, for many people, which ends up with the continuation. You may retire from, from one career, but move on to a little bit of something else going forward. Excellent point. So that brings us to our next item of the six things to know before you jump into retirement, um, which is decreased spending and budgeting. Um, a pre-plea plan uh, for budgeting is, is very crucial to retirement. You need to understand what you have and what your liabilities are going forward and how you're going to pay for those. I think even more important is sort of a pre-plan to your plan. So, you know, you, you kind of come up with an idea that I want to retire at age 65, but does that mean you want to pay off your house? Do you want to pay off the cars and, and kind of get yourself into a position where you're more financially stable to retire? Um, and then how much are you going to spend on traveling? Because, you know, the, I think earlier in your retirement, you tend to spend a little bit more, still a little bit more spry kind of do some of those things on the bucket list that you've always wanted to do, maybe before any medical conditions or limited mobility kind of comes into play. So these are all sort of things to consider. You want to um, answer these questions so you can help come with a fine-tuned plan um, for your retirement. So once you do retire, um, you have a good perspective of what you want to do because after all, at that point, unless if you continue working part-time, you are going to be on a fixed budget. Another thing to consider with budgeting, and we see this a lot here in the office as we, we meet with clients, is if you retire before age 65, your medical costs play a big part in your budgeting. Um, you generally cannot get Medicare before age 65, so you need to consider how are you gonna cover your health insurance cost? You know, are you, do you have a spouse where you can end up on their plan? Um, are you gonna be paying out of pocket or are you one of those rare people that had a pension and possibly um, are covered through a prior employer with, with medical coverage? So I think the biggest thing here is to, to just be realistic about your budget. Um, sit down and actually kind of figure it out. If you were eating out two or three times a week previously, chances are you're still really going to enjoy to do that and you're actually going to have more time to do activities like that. So you want to try and plan for things like that accordingly in your budget. That's an excellent point. Medical cost does pop up a lot in our conversation mm -hmm. with the clients. That recent survey that you and I were, were sharing with the listeners, also medical, 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 we hear it all the time. Um, Medicare is a wonderful program, part of Social Security. Again, 65. So one more reason, really, if you can work past age 65, you can make a much better transition for your medical cost. If you are working at a company, you're, probably your medical costs are fairly low as far as your premiums you're having to pay. Companies are, are subsidizing the majority of it. That gap, if you, if you end up retiring and not, and you do that before age 65, the cost of medical insurance in your 60s with, not, with no subsidy from your company can be $1,000 or more. Oh, yeah. We, we see it all the time, and, and clients are, are shocked. Like it, It's just an unexpected expense that some people don't realize and didn't plan for in their budget, if you would. Exactly. That's why we bring it up in, in these idea, uh, items you need to consider as mm -hmm. you get close to retirement. Medical costs, especially if you think you've got some medical issues, really, really let that play into your decision-making process. Another area that we thought was important uh, as you're considering what you might do in retirement or when you might actually approach retirement is, is to keep a structured routine. I think one thing, that definitely for me, when I'm working, you know, Monday through Friday, every day is pretty similar. Get up around the same time, do the same thing, arrive at the office, 
grab my coffee, check my emails, do some things, run through to six, go home, next day, do it all again, do that five days a week, maybe even on the weekend, come up here for a short period of time. If you're fully retired, you really don't have anybody you have to answer to. At that point, you can just kind of do whatever makes you happy, which is wonderful, except a lot of people will get bored. Um, you know, one thing we see with older people and older clients is that they like the routine. It kind of keeps them moving, keeps them going, makes them feel kind of good about themselves. It's, it's really valuable. It's really considered like the most critical of all goals in retirement is to have a structured routine, keep you moving. Very important for you physically, because that'll help you to keep active, to get some exercise. Very important for you mentally, because it keeps the mind going, stimulates it. Uh, really what, what people will tell you is that a structured routine will keep you sane. If without it, you'll just get lost, confused, and, and end up just not achieving any of the goals that you're hoping to achieve as you went into retirement. So it's really about time management and time utilization. You want to manage your time so that you're enjoying what you're doing, but you want to utilize the time. Very easy to get up late, sit around, maybe have your coffee, kind of wonder what you're going to do, go do a couple things, day's over. You just don't feel like at the end of the day you've really met all the goals that you want. And this happens day after day after day. You lose your purpose. Just not really uh, the way you want, it, you, you want it to go. It also is a huge way of generating stress. At the end of the day, if you don't feel like you've accomplished what you wanted, if you don't feel like you're making progress, uh, it, it generates stress. Stress is one of the largest problems that the elderly have. It really weighs upon them. We all get worried about stress-related items, but the older you get, it just seems that stress can really, really break you down. It takes your toll on everybody. So that structured routine and the ability to sort of decide what you want to do, make a goal, make a list, and then run it through, will really kind of keep you upbeat. And what we've really found that that structured routine is going to give you a positive routine, make you feel good about what you're doing. And of course, the positive routine is going to help you have positive thoughts. You're going to enjoy your life more at that point. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think that sort of leads into the next item, which um, kind of goes hand in hand. You want to have a structured routine, but you don't want to be so busy that you're overwhelmed by what you're doing in retirement. So that's take it a little easy. Find a balance between you know that routine and, and just not being overwhelmed. Um, I think all of us that work, um, you know, we end up having a hectic schedule and it's really hard to just slow down a little bit. You see this on the weekends or your vacations. Um, you know, it could take a couple of days to decompress sometimes from, you know, just not working, worrying about emails and, you know, what this client may be doing or that, you know, some things you sort of left behind that weren't completely wrapped up before you, you know, took a few days out from the office. Those responsibilities that, that come with our fancy work titles um, make it really hard to sort of slow down a little bit and, and just take the time to enjoy things. And, and also, you know, the families that we support. You know, I think people focus on work a lot, um, but you know, if you do have kids, a lot of what you do is sort of wrapped up in, in that time as well. And I think as we move into retirement, all those items are sort of removed a little bit more. You, you may focus more on your grandchildren, but I think it's a little different focusing on grandchildren versus your own children. All good points. Uh, we're going to be continuing this conversation on things you want to consider in retirement when we get back from the break. You are listening to Dollars and Cents here in Central Florida. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Dollars and Cents, where we do help you make sense out of life's decisions involving your dollars. My name is Rob Field. I am with Nelson Financial Planning here in Winter Park, joined uh, hosting today by Christina Lamb, a fellow certified financial fiduciary. Nelson Financial Planning does stand ready to help you change your life through a successful and cost-effective financial plan. Feel free to give us a call. Definitely visit our website, nelsonfinancialplanning.com. Before the break, we were talking about some different things we thought were important as you get into retirement. Christina was telling us a little bit about the ability to take it easy. I know I kind of emphasize very strongly about, hey, you got to make sure you're structured, got to do this, got to do that, be active. But Christina's point is very well taken about taking it easy. Yeah, I mean, I think as with many things in life, um, balance is the key. 
Um, so take it easy, I feel is um, maybe probably one of the hardest rules to follow out of all of these, um, just because trying to um, actually be ably, able to mentally slow down, um, I personally find this really hard to do. You know, taking the time to enjoy your cup of coffee in the morning, maybe go sit outside, enjoy the weather, listen to the birds, just because you can, not because you have to rush anywhere or have anything in particular to do. Another thing, you know, with, with taking it easy actually comes into play is, is, is starting a hobby or, or spending more time with friends and family. You know, things that you enjoy to do in life and not necessarily don't have to do. Um, which leads us to our next item, which is um, continue to socialize and, and interact with, with your friends, which can be a little harder to do in retirement. Totally agree. This is considered to be the most difficult thing to do in retirement is to continue to socialize, keeping up with people. We're kind of used to different resources of how to spend time with friends and associates during our workday. You know, for most of us, our workday does take up 30 to 40 percent of our whole life. I mean, we're working Monday through Friday, long hours. We're surrounded by people. That's our socializing. It comes at us whether we need it or not. And during these hours, you know, most of the socializing takes place. Many of us will even continue to socialize with our coworkers after work, weekend outings, call them on the phone. They're just, that's, they're a big part of our whole life. So we miss, you know, not being, we, we do miss having the ability to have somebody with us all day long, every day in a given situation. Now, we might not miss the, you know, hour long meetings that we think go on too long. We might not miss having to work on a project that is going on and on and on, and then got too many people involved. But for the most part, we do miss that interaction with people and it stimulates the mind. It's really one of the most important things to remain social. It can be difficult. Um, that next chapter of life, it's going to involve around retirement. But the challenge is to find ways to spend time with people outside of the office because we all require some type of social interaction. It's just, it's just the way we're built. So it's, it's a must that your plan in retirement include ways to socialize and to establish new relationships. I do know that this is one thing that probably frustrates my dad the most, hmm. is that he's at home, he's not as mobile as he used to be, and he just can't get in front of enough people. Right? Well, Tries to use, getting out in general. Like it's hard for him to get out, hence, you know, to be around other people. Right, and part of the issue is his friends that he used to socialize with years back, they're not as mobile either. Right, they're in the same boat he is. They're in the <laughs> they exact can't same boat that he get is. around easily. Uh, you know, we're trying to teach him how to use his phone so we can talk to people. Uh, I get a lot of dials throughout the <laughs> night that I don't think he meant to call me. I think he was trying to check his emails, but it does happen. But yeah, it's um, the older we get, the less mobile we are. We try to fight it as hard as we can. Mobility is one of the ways that we socialize because we mm. get out to see people. So you got to think of ways uh, to interact with people and that works for where you are in that stage of your life. Absolutely. I think bottom line here, you know, with retirement is just take some time to think about what retirement is going to look like for you. You know, maybe 10 years prior, five years prior to when, when you're thinking of retiring, just spend a little time to think, you know, what that may look like for you. And I, overall, that'll help you um, have a more robust retirement and, and something that, that you enjoy. Um, so Rob, as a Gen Xer, many hmm. of us talk about how, you know, we're not going to get a Social Security paycheck. And how is it that we are having to pay into Social Security? Um, and, you know, there's talk of we may not see a check in the mail or, well, I probably don't do a check in the mail anymore, but, um, you know, a, a payment into our bank account, if you would. <laughs> it's a great point. I get asked that a lot. Um, I We are really big at Nelson Financial Planning about bringing all of your possible retirement dollars into one spot and how we're going to optimize it. So we know that you might have a retirement plan. You might have some personal savings, either uh, you know, assets in your house or things you've saved outside of work. But Social Security, we all qualify for some form or fashion of Social Security. So we want to build that in kind of a, we kind of call it a three-legged stool between retirement, savings, and Social Security. I get that question a lot people read articles that are telling them that Social Security is, is going to just stop completely. Social Security is made up of a couple of things. One is they do have a trust fund of money that they have saved over the years. It's close to $3 trillion. 
Now that number has gone down to about 2.8, and that makes people very, very nervous. We've seen over the last few years uh, an increase in number of people retiring. COVID hit about two years ago. A lot of people that were close to retirement it accelerated it, so now they've retired faster. At the same time, we've got uh, the number of workers that are paying in, that's gone down a little bit. So we have the trust fund, 2.8 trillion, excess contributions, it's slowly decreasing, but the government's already doing some things to try to try to address that. Even if we made no changes, and every year the Social Security is making changes to try to improve that, the trust fund would still go another 20 years. After that, if we just were paying out Social Security benefits based on just the income we bring in, because we are taxing people's income up to a certain point, it would still equate to about a 75% payout. We don't want that. I don't think that's going to happen, but it'll never not be there. You'll always have something. I just hope that it's a decent number. Uh, again, longevity, as we've talked about before, as people live longer, Social Security is on the hook for, for a whole lot more. So what we want to do then is say, okay, what are some changes that could occur? Every year they make changes anyway. It's always you know, based on the earnings limit. So they will tax up to 147000 of whatever you make and apply that to Social Security. If you make more than 147, you're not being taxed. That taxable amount is about 6.2%. They talk about increasing that, but as you probably know as a tax specialist, anytime you're increasing somebody's tax rate, it's very unpopular. Yeah. So that's really the last thing that they would do. But what they do every year is they raise that earnings limit. They say, okay, instead of last year we did 137, this year we'll do 142, the next year 147,000, meaning that first 147,000 that you make, will have a, the 6.2% applied to it. If they, bet, if they kind of move that up to 200,000, they would end up grabbing and tapping into about another 10% of the income that's being generated in the United States. That's one thing to do. They do that every year, they'll probably continue to raise that, hopefully still keep it at 6.2%. Um, one thing they do is the retirement age. You kind of, they kind of come up with 65 used to be full retirement age and all of your payout will be based on that. It moved up to 66 over the years and now we're at the point where if you're born after 1960, you're actually full retirement age of Social Security would be age 67. That number is where you kind of figure out how much would you get in retirement, either reduced or maybe it would grow up. So there's a lot of things with Social Security that uh, we're addressing. It will be around. They're making changes. Uh, I'm very confident that you'll get some kind of payout from it. So again, Social Security, retirement, savings, put them all together. Give us a call at Nelson Financial Planning. Let us continue some of these conversations we're sharing with you on today's radio show. I'm Rob Field with Nelson Financial Planning. This is Christina Lamb with Nelson Financial Planning. Appreciate you joining us on Dollars and Cents. Enjoy your weekend.